the new tiny little Canik Mete MC9 Micro Compact Shooting Impressions. Today you'll watch two shooters put their absolute first rounds through the gun. We'll test full magazine plus one, see how it runs fully stuffed. Our trademark what's for dinner test to see what it eats. Practical sights and trigger control test using a spinner target. Some practical accuracy from seven yards. And then give you the concluding thoughts of two shooters coming up next on GB Guns. So though I have not shot the MC9, I did take a moment prior, you know, while we're setting up the range and um, tested out the different back straps. It came with the small. I put the large on it because typically I favor, in Graham's favor, of wanting a larger back strap. Um, today the medium one fit me better for this particular gun, so we are running with the medium. And we've got 10 rounds of blazer, or sorry. Yes. Yeah, blazer, blazer bronze. Tia's using the pinky rest magazine. I've got the longer one so that I can get my whole hand on there. And, and yes, helps. folks, it comes with the pinky rest floor plate as I showed and said in the tabletop, yet some <laughs> of you still didn't catch that. Yeah, and when trying that back strap on, I did not have a mag in it and I noticed that it was even short for me. So I appreciate that you took that on there. And we've got a reduced size torso target out at 25 yards. But these shots are really just to get a feel for the gun. Yep, that's a canic. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly was kind of um, hesitant to to you know get too excited about enjoying a small experience, even though it's a canic. But it's still a canic, and it's going to be an awesome review. And I noticed in the tabletop, the trigger on this is a little bit heavier than it is on, say, like the Rivals or anything like that. Uh, it didn't seem to slow you down at all. I don't notice that, but I have more triggered pulls behind a canic than you do so i didn't notice that and i i noticed that you had said that in the video and was curious I'm not noticing it so far all right using the 15 round extendo so that i can get my whole hand on the gun it's still only 10 rounds yeah there's only 10 rounds in here but i'm saying that this this magazine lets me get a whole hand i don't know if that's cheating or not um being more comfortable is always a plus <laughs> all right There we go. Oh. Very controllable for how small it is. That's yeah, it's right up there with something that I really enjoyed not too long ago. Um, now I will say, it, it might be this magazine that's really helping me because I can get full finger, I can get that pinky support on there. So how about for the full mag plus one, I'll use the uh, pinky rest one. We'll see how that does. Full magazine plus one, we're taking our one from the 15 rounder. And then we've got the 12 or 13, I forget, 12 rounder with the pinky rest. Does have to get stuffed in there. Oh, I can still get my whole hand on there. Ooh, this, this, this might be good. And I do want to remind folks we're using Blazer Brass 115 grain. So all the talks about Canix needing 124 plus P or you're going to lock the slide open. This is straight out of the box using soft 115 range ammo. 2017 was a long time ago. They fixed the recoil spring. If it's still choking on you, chances are it's the shooter, not the ammo. But we'll find out more in uh, What's for Dinner. And maybe I'll make a fool of myself and have issues right now. <laughs> <laughs> Try to burn it down, same piece of steel out there, 25 yards. I don't know about you guys, but it's so much more fun for me to watch this section when he's hitting it. <laughs> um, so there you have it, rapid fire with the weak range ammo out of a short canic. No choking issues whatsoever, very controllable. And I think that was probably my highest hit percentage on one of these guns in a long time. Lately, yeah. Um, it's, it's micro-compact though. Is it 
doesn't it's, feel like it, it does it's it. not it's shooting like a like a real gun it sits in your hand just like a can all right next up let's see what it eats Time again, what's for dinner time to see what the gun eats. This is thanks to our patrons and Ammo Squared supporters. As we move down the line, you'll see that all of these rounds have different weights, case materials, projectile types and shapes, ogive locations. There's a lot of variety here. If you're curious about trying some of this stuff yourself, check out the article at gbgunsdepot.com. We've got links to it where we can find it. Three rounds because we're looking to see, does it feed from slide lock? Is there enough energy to cycle and feed another round of the same type? And then lastly, does it lock open on empty? So for circle number one, starting what's for dinner off, we have um, Civil Defense from Liberty Ammunition. This is a 50 grain plus P. Felt the plus. Sorry about the focus. And for circle number two, we have um, heavy shots, frangible lead free bullet in 100 grain. These are kind of a long, lanky looking bullet. They're not sexy, but I bet they're effective. <laughs> And the fog is really messing with the camera focus today. Tell you what though, I love canics. <laughs> Circle number three is Hornady's Critical Defense. These are 100 grain FTX. This is the Critical Defense light. Did I not say that? Oh, they're Which, light. You can tell by the pink nub in it instead of the red one. Yeah, these, if anything's gonna choke this gun, this might be it. And we're using the uh, Mete SFX magazine because we can. It certainly feels a little bit different. Circle three, yeah? Yes. Look at that. 100 grain low recoil ammunition. No issues through the micro compact. Circle number four is Norma's monolithic hollow point. This is 108 grain and they say it's got extreme performance. definitely produces a little bit more recoil that I'm not enjoying very much but I wouldn't want to have to endure that through any other gun <laughs> <laughs> and for circle number five we have blazers 115 grain aluminum ammunition and we use aluminum and steel case ammunition in these tests because people buy it because it's cheap uh, it's cheaper, however, the friction coefficient between cases within the magazine and in the chamber of the gun can sometimes cause feeding issues. It also expands and contracts at a different rate than brass does, which can lead to extraction issues. Uh -oh. What happened? It didn't seat all the way initially, so when I let go of the trigger, it rode itself the rest of the way forward. So it didn't go all the way into battery? Yeah. That could have been that uh, friction issue. So we'll call aluminum maybe on this. Those aluminum cases are also produced to pretty low quality standards, so getting a bad round out of that stuff is a higher chance than, say, some of the other premium ammunition we have here today. Circle number six is Wolf's 115 grain steel case ammunition. Not sure if the stuff is still imported anymore because it was coming out of Russia and using that magazine. As I mentioned in the uh, tabletop, if you want to use your other Canic mags, you can. Just keep in mind when you don't have a sleeve to stop, like on the 15 rounder that comes with this, you run the risk of over inserting and damaging some of the internals. So just be gentle when you do that. Circle number six. It 
it sounds much more violent um, than it was appearing. But you know, in for some That's reason, nice. this micro compact doesn't really feel like a micro compact. I'm getting a little bit of jarring in the wrist, but it's a very comfortable gun to shoot. Yeah, just rise and fall, just like any other, I would say, four plus length barrel is, is what I'm experiencing in that. Yeah, circle number seven is Federal's Syntec Defense SJP segmented jacketed hollow point, 138 grain. Um, this is an interesting hollow point that breaks apart into, I believe, four pieces total, and it's blue. I was gonna say, don't forget the important stuff. Yeah, it's blue. Circle seven. Stouter recoil on this one for sure. I can feel it in my uh, trigger finger. Group nicely. Focus. Circle eight there is Winchester Defender Elite. Sorry, Winchester Elite Defender. Stop the threat. 147 grain bonded jacketed hollow point. These tend to be a little bit on the nasty side as far as recoil goes. I'm sure Tia's upset that she missed out on the opportunity to shoot this. I mean, if I had to do it out of any gun, it would be that one. It just slammed right into the feed ramp. Failure to feed. I'm gonna try that again. Fed that time. Might be a little bit of a long bullet for this gun. We'll find out. You know, recoil's not as bad as I was thinking. It's uh, got a lot of push, but it's not snapping so far. Uh, did not group very well though. Before we get into circle number nine, Tia just had a great point about one of the risks of using those over, over length mags without the sleeve to make sure they don't rock or get out of alignment, is it's quite possible that my pinky pressing on the magazine was causing a little bit of tilt in the mag and that might have been the feed issue that we experienced with the Winchester. For number nine is the Federal Syntec 150 grain gamer load uh, action pistol. These ones are red. Nope. It doesn't say gamer load on the box. It so doesn't, it does. okay. no, but it's it's for people to pay, play the games. Now that is not a long mag. No. It might be this is a gun where racking or slingshotting is better than uh, using the slide release. That felt pretty soft in this gun. Hit interestingly high. And our biggest load, heaviest load for the day, 158 grain is the PPU subsonic line. Going to be using a longer mag. I'm not gonna grip the mag at all as I hit the slide release. Worked, but these are also a different shape of projectile. These are all things that come into play with reliability. What a pleasant gun to shoot. <laughs> That's crazy. There aren't many micro compacts that I would ever even consider serious training with. Generally because the magazines are a bear to load, not the case with Canic mags because these are the same mag bodies that you've known for years. And then also because the guns tend to be flippy and uncomfortable. So far, pretty good on this one. Next up is the spinner test. That is our six inch Titan Grid Outdoors spinner target. And we are back at how far to you? Uh, 13. 13 yards. We've got 10 rounds of, we've now swapped our freedom munitions because we ran out of the Blazer Brass. So this target, as you can see, is small. And when you hit it, it starts moving. And that makes it even harder to hit. Makes, means that timing a precise shot is important. That's why we use it to evaluate sights and trigger control on a gun. How far it moves is going to be a factor of energy. It's a short barreled gun, 115 grain. It may not spin. Ow. I'm going to put this other air plug back in my ear. Yeah, that, that's advisable.
Nice. Yeah. <laughs> you got more ammo. Keep going. I don't want to do it again. I'm too excited. I can't. <laughs> and I only had one left. <laughs> Finally, I did it, and obviously it was going to be with the canning. <laughs> so for folks who are new to the channel, that is Tia's second time getting it over the top on camera, and the last time was with the canning mete. <laughs> and that was the second try, too. So this was first attempt today. Um, it, I probably couldn't have done it. <laughs> Just couldn't. Everything about it, even though it's a subcompact. Micro compact. Micro. Um, it, they still made that possible. I mean, the shooter is only part of the variable there. I have not shot since SHOT Show. So it's not like I've been out here practicing, you know, to make sure that we could do that on film. Like, the gun is what made that possible. So, uh, as far as sights and trigger control, we've got a wh bright white dot and blacked out rear. Preferred. And then the trigger to me feels a little bit heavier than is on the competition models of Canix, but were you able to f obviously find the wall and find the shot well? Uh, the, the triggers are amazing. And I think that whatever you're feeling as far as weight is concerned with this is good because this is something that would be carried more often than you would for larger frame models. Um, I certainly can't carry an FSX unfortunately, but Sorry, we just had a lot of background noise there. Oh, um, but the trigger for me feels just, I don't know, they, they just work for how I shoot. Um, I, I don't feel any extra wall. I don't feel any extra behind. It just, it's a canic. Pressure's on, and I do have the advantage of using the 15 router so I can get, actually, I get my full, full grip on the 12 round too. Note, folks, even after I loosened it up a little bit, he didn't get it over. <laughs> I got it over. Oh, did it go? Yeah, it went over. Uh, you're right. It did that one time. Jeez. <laughs> but honestly, this is about the gun eval, not some competition between <laughs> Tia and I. Don't let her fool you. <clears throat> it's more of a competition with myself, honestly. And the more people that I have that are watching, the stronger my internal competition gets. And it, it's really not about the person. That he's just the only one here. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, I definitely felt that it was a heavier trigger. I felt more of a need to punch on the moment. Um, and the large white dot front sight is indeed large. They are defensive sights. They're great for defense. Getting it on a torso quickly and going is what they're designed for and that's what they're good for for me that was a little bit of a hamper actually on this small moving target but that's not a fault of the gun that just means the sights do what they're intended for this is great defensive sights great defensive trigger and i'm i guess you'd say more of a bullseye shooter in that sense that i i felt a little bit of hampering here but obviously could still do it um uh, might have had a little bit of mental game going on since Tia just <laughs> knocked it over the top. But next we'll see how it does do with grouping. Let's get some match ammo and try shooting at a one inch square from seven yards. For our accuracy today, we're gonna to be using the Nosler 115 grain assured stopping power. ASP. I'll be aiming at the left circle square. And these are one inch squares. We use this because it tends to be to the eye about the same size as the front sight post when shot from seven yards. Oh, Tia had it not quite want to chamber. Pause and reset this. All right, we are rechambered. It did not feed. God Another damn. issue with the Nosler ASP. 
It's Since going into the chamber. But not seating, it's right? It's not seating all the way. And this round has some marks on it. Maybe Nazar's not so matchy anymore. Let's grab another box of ammo and we'll give that a try. All right, we've now grabbed a box of Colt National Match. Uh, this stuff is loaded by Double Tap, 124 grain, and it is absolutely filthy out of the box, like disgusting. But they claim it's match, so we're gonna give it a try. Tia has uh, five fresh rounds, and we've put a red X over that first shot since this stuff might have a different point of impact. Interesting. I wish we knew how much of it's the gun, how much of it's the ammo, since this is our first time shooting this stuff. But your first shot out of it was dead center. Hmm. Five rounds of that Colt slash double tap national match, 124 grain. Okay. Good? Yeah. I always hesitate and I'm not always excited to go to the range when we've got something so small to review. Um, but you, other than the weight of it, the way that it performs and the way that it sits in your hands, the way that it just feels like a canic through the, you know, the operation of it does not feel like a micro compact at all. Um, my only my only negative is I don't have one of my own yet. <laughs> uh, I, I really... This will be what I take to our next training course, just so that I get more time with it, so that I'm more proficient with a smaller canic to run um, as a defensive gun. I mean, I would carry it now, but I would love to be to just know exactly how it's gonna feel every time, yeah. Now, as we were packing up to head out to the range, I uh, was chatting with our friend, David the Humble Marksman, and he mentioned the scallops on the heel of the gun kind of digging into the palm. I was curious, since we have, everyone's got different hands, and we've changed back straps. Uh, Tia, did you experience anything like that? I did not. I mean, you can see where it was sitting. I would expect any gun to show a mark where it was sitting in my hands, but I didn't feel like it was digging in. However, I'm not confident that if we had left a small back strap on it, that I would have had that same experience. I believe that whatever extra girth and breadth that this adds to um, the frame probably helped mitigate some of that if it was there at all. My other caution as we approached range time was feeling trigger flip you know trigger slap in your in your finger which is common on these small guns and i did not experience that through this at all um and as we moved up in grain weight it actually got more pleasant to shoot it's super pleasant around 115 124 i didn't shoot the heavier load so i can't comment on that they sounded bassier but in graham's hand they looked just smooth like there was no rise or fall of the gun at all uh yeah it's a canic <laughs> Some criticize Canic for taking so long to get one of these to market, a micro compact. There are a lot of import restrictions when it comes to small guns based on weight, barrel length, number of safeties, all kinds of crazy criteria. Similar to that point sheet that we saw the ATF pitch for braces, there's something like that when it comes to importing pistols and that makes bringing in small guns very difficult unless they are partially or entirely assembled in the US. 
that might be part of why Canik took a while to get this to market. I think they also took their time in getting it right, and they really did. Not to diminish the accomplishments of the Hellcat or the 365, those things change the game, but this so far is my favorite of the micro compacts. I generally don't like shooting them. They're usually too small for my hand. They use a very flippy, very violent. This, I won't say it shoots like a big gun, but it's the closest shooting to a regular size pistol of all the micro compacts we've shot. Very controllable, very comfortable. I felt a little bit of the trigger pinch or trigger slap that Tia said she did not. But we're two different shooters, and we have different hands, and we shoot differently. That's why we're, that's why there's two of us on the channel because everyone's experience is different. That said, it wasn't painful. It's not to the point that I didn't want to shoot it anymore. It's about 30 degrees out here, so hands are cold, and we're kind of in that uncomfortably cold state, which makes things like trigger slap all the more painful. It still wasn't bad in this gun. Kenick did a spectacular job. I don't think you would be wrong for reconsidering your current sub or micro compact for one of these. Not that there's anything wrong with the other models out there, but this is probably the most shootable that we've encountered to date. And I think that waiting so long to come out with something like this is actually perfect because the number of consumers that are purchasing guns now might have had an influence on the design changes and what they took into consideration in building this. So a lot of things I've noticed are changing as the gun consumer market in increases. Yeah, um, and this is really, really smartly done. I, I uh, You guys know I don't care if you buy something or not. Um, and I'm not trying to tell you to go buy one of these, but this is really impressive. This is honestly not the experience that I was expecting. I was thinking, oh great, here goes. This is gonna be the Canik that's not fun to shoot. Um, <clears throat> it should definitely be a consideration. If you're considering anything, this needs to be on your list. And I know there are a lot of you out there who are like me and originally thought, okay, so they chopped the side off of the subcompact, uh, the little swell that was on the slide, and that's gonna be the only difference. And you're wondering if you have a subcompact, is it worth considering the micro compact? Is the difference that big? What's the difference like? So we have a little bonus extra for you guys. We're both going to shoot back and forth between the micro compact and subcompact and see if we can feel or discern any notable differences that might be factors for you guys to consider. So we've got five rounds in the subcompact, five rounds in the micro compact. Tia joined the channel after the subcompact review. She shot one once when she was considering a carry gun, but uh, hasn't spent much time with it since. As you guys saw in the tabletop, the differences between the two are more significant than you might think. We want to see if what that feels like. So with uh, five rounds in each to go back and forth, we've got uh, our piece of steel out there. We're now what is this, 25, 30, 30 yards or so? Kind of a long yeah. reach, but that level of focus and concentration is also what makes you really pay attention to the gun. Okay, <laughs> let's do the other one. <laughs> So that was the subcompact. Now the micro. This is so much more comfortable in the hand, but for different reasons than I expected. Um, this is hefty, it's broad, but it gave me different places to put my hand. But I could get more of my hand on the micro. Interesting. And control it better. This is a little heavy. It's a heavier gun, so when that recoil 
kicks in, I really have to work against it. And the weight of the gun makes made that a little more difficult. Um, Interesting. Now we know with the Metes, uh, as we explained on gbgunsdepot.com in the Canic Guide, it was an evolutionary change. The frames did change and the shaping of a is slightly different. It, it's not easily picked up with the, uh, with the naked eye at first glance, but there are some slight changes to how they contoured things. So, Tia, you're saying for the uh, MC9, the micro compact, it just fits your hand better than the subcompact? The micro definitely fits better than this. Um, it, it, yeah, it just, now it's done. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting. Uh, any other thoughts? No, not right now. All right, I'm gonna give it a try. Off camera, we were just talking and Tia was able to pinpoint a couple details of what makes the micro compact work for her hand better than the subcompact. And part of that has to do with the front strap is more square on the older subcompact and more rounded on the micro compact. And so it's allowing on the micro, she's getting a better wrap of her hand than she was on the sub. Additionally, the breadth of the tang back here uh, the contours are quite different, and so she was getting a little bit of thumb knuckle beat from the subcompact. See how it does for me. I haven't shot the micro or the sub in quite some time. Yeah, I feel that. Dang it. <laughs> Maybe you shouldn't have told me beforehand, because I definitely feel the squareness. You also earlier mentioned the the weight of the micro trigger. Did you notice that same weight on this trigger? Because I did. This to me felt pretty smooth. Okay. Uh, let me, where did I put that? There we go. These pockets have really, these jeans have really generous pockets. Yeah, this, um, this feels more integrated into my hand. The subcompact was more something I was holding yeah but let me find my front sight and I shot better with it too and it wanted to be shot <laughs> yeah that is that is interesting it is definitely I think like you said earlier now it's finished like this is an improvement and advancement over the other design. Um, what I'm finding interesting about our conversation prior and now is that you have a meatier palm than I do. And that wider, uh, the, the subcompact, mm -hmm. I expected you to like more because that you have more place to displace meatiness. Yeah, but I think for me, like with you, it's the subcompact has a more squared grip to it. Uh, it's a blockier feel, whereas the hand just kind of wraps around the contours of the micro compact. Almost unnatural. This is part of the hand, and this is something I'm holding. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Well, I hope this helped you folks, and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.